what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video i wanted to briefly talk about the concept of final in class inheritance in swift so kind of a niche topic but something that's fairly important so here we are on the swift documentation website and i want to focus on this little blurb here uh, basically it's the notion of using the final keyword to ensure that certain classes don't get uh, subclassed. And the reason this is important uh, is A, to enforce your uh, API design and how you're designing your app, uh, B, to show intent more clearly if you're working on a larger team, and C, to avoid bugs, most importantly. So we're going to do a few examples to take a look at this. Shorter video than usual, but that said, make sure you destroy the like button. Nevertheless, get excited, get Xcode ready. Let's talk about some final keywords. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. In addition, to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode. And instead of creating a new project, we're actually gonna stick with a playground. So I'm gonna come up here and hit File, New Playground. We'll stick with a blank playground. And let me go ahead and call this Final Classes. Let's go ahead and create it. Let me expand the window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's just get into it by creating a very basic class. So let's say we have a class called Person. And let's just say the person has an initializer, fairly simple, and they have a public var called name. It's a string and it equals Joe. So for those of you who need a refresher, inheritance and subclassing is the notion of, you know, inheriting and creating a new object from a super object. So let's say here we have a class called, uh, I don't know, instead of Joe, let's use Dan. And Dan is of type of person, fairly simple example of inheritance going on here. So this is, this is great and simple, right? But what's the problem and what the heck is the keyword final? So let's say we have Joe here or Dan here, right? Uh, and a new developer comes along and they wanna get all the information that Dan has in his class and create a new class called, uh, I don't know, Emily, right? Let's say they go ahead and inherit Dan. But let's say in Dan, we override uh, name and we give name uh, a value of Dan. Now, Emily, by default, gets Dan as the name. Uh, in this case, it's going to complain because uh, it's a stored property. We need to actually return that string like so. But obviously, we don't want Emily's name to be Dan. Let's see why it's complaining. Cannot override mutable property with read only property. We're going to go ahead and say, this is that. And we're going to go ahead and make it open. And that error should go away like that. But basically, going back to this example, Emily will now get uh, Dan as the name and it, it's going to inherit, this class will inherit any other thing that we give uh, to this Dan class. What they actually need to do, the new developer, is inherit person, right? But how do we enforce this? How do we tell them that, hey, you inherited from Dan and that's problematic? Enter the final keyword. So now you'll see in hopefully a few seconds that you get an error popping up here, inheritance from a final class Dan. And it's actually not a warning, it's a hard error. So a final actually prevents is basically what you see here. It prevents the inheritance from a class that's marked as final, hence the keyword final. This is a final class. It's not going to have any more subclasses. Basically, leave it be. So it's really good to get into the uh, habit and practice of marking things final uh, when you, know, you have no intention of other people subclassing it. Uh, often I'll see you know, people stick a class. And you know, if you don't have any inheritors, it's not functionally incorrect, but getting into the habit of being more explicit certainly does help your case. 
Now, what do you guys think would happen if we added an extension to this? So let's actually go ahead and do that and see what happens here. So give it a second, give it a second. All right, no error. Why don't we have an error? So the reason we don't have an error here is because final only pertains to subclassing. If you wanna use an extension, you're more than welcome to still use it with a final class. So if you, if you have a case where you, uh, you know, like you have a base class and you wanna add more functionality and subclassing might seem like overkill, you are still more than welcome to go ahead and add an extension. So let's talk about a more uh, realistic example rather than something a little more abstract. Uh, oftentimes in classes, what people will have is a uh, base view controller. And the base view controller might have some styling applied to it. It itself will inherit from UI view controller. That's not what we want, UI view controller, like so. And let's say in this view controller, we override view did layout, or rather view did load. We call super view did load. And let's say we say view dot background color is red. And let's say every single class in our app, we want it to inherit from base view controller. And let's say we go ahead and have, let's say this is a messaging app. So let's say we have another class and this one is base chat view controller. And this inherits from base view controller like that. And let's say in this case, we want to inherit all the functionality in here, but let's say we want to once again actually override view did load, just like that. We're going to call super view did load. Notice the color is different from this. This implies that it's overriding, or rather calling the super method, the super function of its uh, you know, standard library class. And this one is green, might be different based on the color scheme you're working in. Um, but this signifies that, hey, this is the, the overridden function we're calling here in our base class. But let's stick with the ex example. And let's say now we want the background to be blue. Let's say somebody else comes along and they say, okay, I wanna add something to the chat screen. And they go ahead and try to create a class and they say base, uh, I don't know, video chat view controller. And they start inheriting and they type in the base view controller and they come to this and they say, hmm, which one do I want to conform, uh, rather instead of conform, inherit from? Looking at this, especially if someone is new to the project and there's no documentation, I don't know about you guys, but I would go with this one, right? So introducing final here can really prevent these types of issues. And I will admit this is more helpful with larger teams and more contributors in a project. Uh, but you know, if you're looking to get into this space professionally, these little semantics really help build a more solid foundation. So like I said, shorter video, I'm not gonna uh, you know, beat the dead horse more than I have already have. So if uh, you haven't hit the like button, make sure to do so as always. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Do you guys think final is useful? Is it overkill? Is it semantics? Leave video suggestions down below too. I love knowing what you guys want to see. Helps me make more relevant videos. And most importantly, hit subscribe while you're at it if you haven't done so already for daily Swift uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.